on this episode of what's going on with shipping it's time for the november 15th 2021 edition of what the ship is going on five top stories in maritime news hi i'm your host sal mccagliano and today we look at the top five stories in the maritime sector what's going on around the world and largely in the ports of LA and Long Beach since they seem to be the ones that are dominating the news cycle. So let's go ahead and head to our first story. So this Sunday, uh, 60 Minutes, the CBS show, did an entire story on freight and the issue facing the U.S. supply chain. Bill Whitaker did it, and, and I had mixed views on it. I think they did some things really well, and there were some issues I wish they had gone a little further on. I wish they had pushed a little bit further. Uh, they had some great imagery. I really recommend this piece. I will link it in the story. I can't show it because of issues with 60 Minutes and being able to show it, but they had some great images of the ports. And I think one of the best ones was a helicopter flight that Bill Whitaker did with Ryan Peterson from Flexport, looking at the port, showing the backlog in the terminals, the amount of containers, the uh, uh, stowage of containers on rail cars there. Uh, we also saw, had a part of the interview was with Matt Schrapp, who does trucking uh, in the ports of LA and Long Beach, talking about the fact that containers are being stored on chassis and chassis are unavailable. He went into a point of talking about how it's almost impossible for his truckers to come in and return containers because on certain days you can only bring in certain color containers. That's right, certain color containers. If you have the wrong container, on the back of your chassis, you can't come in and you need a chassis to come in. You usually need to drop an empty off to be able to pick up a full. But the issue was was pretty interesting. The one point I really want to highlight and have a contention with was the element with Gene Soroka from the Port of L.A., where he talked about the fact that L.A. was going 24 seven. And the issue was more with truck drivers and with warehouses outside. This is the gate schedule for the past week. And you'll notice right here, oops, sorry, you'll notice right here on Saturday and Sunday that basically there was no service except for some isolated terminals and absolutely none on Sunday. Now, that doesn't mean the port wasn't working. That doesn't mean cranes weren't moving. It doesn't mean ships weren't being offloaded. But what this means are the gates where you can come pick up cargo are not being serviced. And there really needs to be a question raised about this. And, and again, I, th I thought 60 Minutes Hot, hit, hit on some key points. I, I love the, the aspect there about talking to warehouse operator, about the fact that his warehouse is empty, or a shipper whose basically cargo is being held by the rail lines and he's being charged fines for that, even though he can't get at them, the rail yards won't access the forum. But I thought this issue here about the 24 seven of the port really needed to be pushed more. We need to find out who's driving this. Is this the terminals driving this? Is this the truckers driving this? Is this the warehouse and distribution centers driving this? This is the issue that needs to be bore down upon a little bit further. Uh, today's November 15th. That means today is the beginning of hyper demerge. We'll talk about that in a second. And so people are gonna start getting fined for this. And so there needs to be a question about who is responsible for this and where does it reside? The only other, the other thing too, I loved about this article or excuse me, this, this this interview was right at the end is Ryan Pearson made a point about the fact and something I've talked about in a previous video is that these local municipalities, LA and Long Beach are basically driving federal policy. And this is really important. I, I keep hopping on this for a variety of reasons, but ports are on municipal land and therefore it is the local municipalities that do this. However, water is controlled by the, the national government this is Gibbons versus Ogden, 1824. And the question becomes, how do we deal with this? And that question needs to be asked. And this is why I think it's very important who becomes the next maritime administrator, the Federal Maritime Commission, they have a voice in this. Port development is right in the wheelhouse of the maritime administration. And yet we have heard nothing, nothing from either the forthcoming maritime administrator, the acting maritime administrator, any maritime administrator. I'll take past maritime administrators, but we haven't heard anything so far. And so that's story number one. Story number two comes from Sam Chambers over at Splash 24-7. 82 container ships wait off Southern California on day LA and Long Beach start penalizing late box pickups. 
So today is the start of the hyperdemerge. This is when they're going to start leveling this. Now, there's some interesting stories about this that came out. Steve Ferrara uh, on his LinkedIn page noted the fact, and his B2B broadcast on freight waves, noted the fact that this has a 90-day window, that this tariff that the ports of LA and Long Beach are putting in have only a 90-day window on it. He was predicting that they were not going to enforce this, but we haven't heard anything to counter this so far. So the beginning of these demerge charges will be levied by LA and Long Beach. Now these fines go to the ocean carriers who in turn are probably gonna roll these right over to the shippers and then to the consumers. And you know this image here, the Port of Long Beach is great. It's kind of one of those images you got in that 60 minute piece. <clears throat> it shows you how full these yards are. They just can't, load any more containers and move them on the sorters and get them out. And again, the story I did this weekend about the uh, PMA, PSMA, and, and Mar Mar Marine Exchange pushing the vessels out 150 miles does nothing to alleviate this. And right now, LA and Long Beach are at max capacity. And, and again, while we're seeing the dwell times coming down, the, the number of containers waiting at anchor and offshore are increasing. So not exactly sure we're fixing this. Other stories that were really interesting is uh, Charleston and Virginia. The ports of Charleston and Virginia see record container volumes in October. There's a lot of issue about going to other ports. Understand ocean carriers are looking at this, but it's not apples to apples. You can't just take a container ship from Southern California and route them to Charleston, to Virginia, to Florida, to Houston. It doesn't work that way. The cargo is, is consigned to certain locations. There are arrangements made. That cargo has to go. If you offload in Southern Florida and it has to get back to Southern California, what good have you done by moving it halfway across the country? And you know this is the issue about the Florida ports that they can rescue Clim uh, Christmas. But again, it's the size of the ports and the fact that a lot of ports are reaching their capacity too. And this will just have a domino effect. So how hyper impacts this I'm going to wait and see. I actually think one of the things we're going to see here is, is the ports and the administration are going to claim success because those dwell times are coming down, but are they offloading vessels at the same rate or are they just pushing them off the coast and we're not seeing them more? And there's another factor that we're going to talk about. That's story number two. So story number three, I get this question a lot is what's happening in Southern California isolated. Well, we already talked about the fact that Houston, Savannah, New York, New Jersey, to a lesser extent, are experiencing these delays. But here's the Lodestar report, port congestion cascades into intra-Asia services disrupting container traffic. This is referring to the movement of goods to these larger consolidation ports in Asia, particularly in Singapore. This story in particularly looks at what's happening right now in, in Singapore. And the fact that we're seeing uh, the Singapore Port Authority talking about the fact that they had to open up their newest mega container terminal to use that area for overflow boxes is an indication amount of flow of cargo that's coming in there. And so one of the things we're seeing right now is these delays happening not just in Southern California and American ports, but we're seeing it across the entire supply chain and particularly right now in Asia. It's going to get a little worse in Asia too because there is a blackout on ship information coming out of Asia right now because of the requirement or the fear of broadcasting ship positions through AIS, something I talked about on my episode, on my uh, uh, interview I did on What the Truck. Also, we're seeing in this story some really other interesting things. We're seeing the Trans Pacific freight rates coming down. And particularly, what we're seeing is the reduction of the premium fees, these added on fees that increase the overall rates up to the really high levels, the 15, 20, 25,000 per box we saw. And so we're seeing those fees starting to come off. Uh, we're also seeing, uh, again, before this is that story I just mentioned about the challenges right now in the supply chain because of China going blackout on their AIS transponders. If you go to marine traffic and take a look at marine traffic off the coast of East Asia right now, what you get is not ship names, you just get satellite information. And that's causing a problem for routing for a lot of services that use AIS data to determine what's happening to their cargoes. And it just makes reporting and tracking much more difficult. That's story number three. 
So story number four isn't from the traditional sites I take you to, but these are two stories, one from Reuters and one from the Wall Street Journal. So one of the things we're going to start to see is some claims of success as the dwell time in the ports of LA and Long Beach go down, as the number of ships will start to decline as we get further into the end of the calendar year with the end of the Christmas season and the holiday season, there's going to be a lot of claims for success. Hey, we, we were able to achieve our goal. We were able to knock this down and we're getting a bite on the amount of traffic. But there are two issues looming on the horizon that are impacting this more than anything else. In that 60 minute piece, Bill Whitaker turned to Ryan Peterson when they're up in a helicopter and they look at all the containers and Bill Whitaker said, so this is what inflation looks like. And that's a key word, inflation. U.S. inflation hit a 31 year, 31 year high in October as consumer prices jumped 6.2%. Uh, I was fortunate here at Campbell. I got a pay raise this year, but my pay raise does not match what inflation is going up with. So in truth, I lose money because what I make yearly is worth less this year than it was last year. And inflation is kicking up. And there has to be a question raised here whether inflation is being driven on purpose to reduce demand. Because again, one of the things we keep hearing is it's US consumers are buying so much. If you want to slow that down, you make goods more expensive. In other words, they don't have enough money, Americans, to buy goods from overseas, but I think that's a misnomer. We, there are core items that have to be purchased from overseas. There are elements of our economy we have to get. And the idea that we're just buying junk, which is, seems to be a, a big consensus, isn't always true. The reason we buy a lot of things is because it's cheaper to transport from overseas than to manufacture here. Now, until that changes, and I think I'm a big proponent of this, we should be building more here, right here. I agree 100% with that. But until that changes, and that's a long-term change, this is going to be a factor. So I think inflation is going to be done here to try to control this. The other element you're seeing here is Chinese factory volume is coming down. We've already seen this with power issues. We've seen this across the board in China, that their factory output is starting to slow down. And this is going to have an impact. If there's less goods to be exported from China and imported into America, we're gonna start seeing that slowdown. A lot of the congestion at, at the ports in California are being driven by vessels arriving at those berths, talked about this in the video yesterday, arriving at the berths or arriving at the port without scheduled berths, basically waiting for a spot to land. And this is driving a lot of this. And so where this winds up, it's gonna be interesting to see, but just be careful about everyone claiming success in solving the, the transportation infrastructure issue when inflation and slowdowns in Asia may be the real cause. That's story number four. As always for story number five, I get to choose the story that I think I find the most interesting and I added in here and it's hard for me not to go back to my first true love. And that is the motor vessel ever given. Uh, right here, Sam Chambers with his story in Splash 24 seven buffed out nicely. Ever Given shows off completed nose job, just to be clear, Sam. Nose job, but that was my phrase. Doesn't give me any credit in this story, Sam. Can't believe you didn't give me credit in this one. At least, at least a little bit of a shout out would have been nice. Uh, here's some images that came out. This is Ever Given with her new fitted bow. You can see by the paint job right here, this entire section right here from after the, the two bow thrusters, right here below the boot topping, except for this little piece of the bulbous bow right here, which is original. This entire section right here was basically cut off and then a new section welded on and put back in. You can see where they went all the way back aft here on the steel, checking it out and probably replacing some of it. She was in the dry dock for not a long period of time. As Sam uh, notes here in his uh, report, uh, she was in the repair for six weeks, which was twice as long as originally scheduled. Uh, there was issues about further damage back aft. And it looked like they had to repair some steel probably further back aft. They were worried about that being further back. But again, they've been able to get her outfitted and fitted with a new bow. Here she is in the water and actually started to load in Queen Dow. She loaded her cargo out and uh, the first of uh, boxes, she, I think she loaded about 5,000 in there. And then she's heading to other ports in China, Malaysia, and then heading off to Europe via the Suez. She is slated to go through the Suez on December 7th and December 8th. 
And so we'll be tracking her as she goes through. So again, I just, I always have to come back to Ever Given whenever a story comes up about her. It's, it's hard not to go back to her. But the other stories I think are really interesting to watch. It'll be interesting to see this week what happens with the hyper-demerge payment. Uh, also looking at what's gonna happen with regards to the new nomination of an infrastructure czar. The former mayor of New Orleans has been named to be the infrastructure czar. So we'll see what happens with that. How does the $17 billion in infrastructure funding for ports goes? Uh, $17 billion is a huge amount of money. The question is, where's it going to go? Is it going to go to coastal ports? Is it going to inland ports? Is it going to ports on the Great Lakes? Uh, we have a lot of ports. And in truth, $17 billion can be weeded out very quickly to 80, 100 ports. And that's not that much money going in. But again, if we had a national plan, a national strategy to handle ports and shipping, that would be key. Be really interested to hear if Ann Phillips, who's gonna go before a nomination before the Commerce Committee in the Senate, has any ideas about this. Again, no word when that hearing is gonna be held, no word about comments from the FMC on hyper demerge. Again, we're, we're, we're seeing the federal government on one hand saying this, whereas the federal government regulatory issue on the other hand is doing little to nothing. So that is what the ship is going on for today, November 15th, 2021. I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, please subscribe, hit the bell, be alerted about new videos when they come out, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, share it across social media. And if you can at all do it, please uh, contribute to the Patreon page that allows me the time and the effort to do the research needed to produce these episodes. And again, every Monday it is what the ship. So I hope to see you next Monday, but in the meantime, we have other videos coming out typically on Wednesday, on Friday, and then on Saturday or Sunday, depending on <laughs> how much time I have to get the weekend episode going. But until next time, Sal, signing off.